Am I the butthole for telling my brother and sister-in-law not to have another child? All fake names, on mobile, etc. This actually happened at our family Easter, but I wanted to get some outside perspective. I, 31M, went to my brother Jacob's place for Easter. His wife Kate and daughter Aria, 3, were of course there, too. To note, Aria has Down syndrome, and she probably won't be able to live independently. She also has a heart defect. I always assumed that Jacob and Kate wouldn't have more children, as caring for Aria is expensive and takes a lot of time. However, Jacob and I were smoking on the porch and talking about our gran, who lives in a nursing home. He mentioned how that type of care is super expensive, and how they were trying for another baby to care for Aria after they're gone. I was pretty shocked and asked him to elaborate. He said it would be cheaper to have another kid instead of saving up hundreds of thousands in a trust for Aria's care. I told him that was very effed up and would make the kid feel unwanted. By then, sister-in-law had come outside, and she started laying into me. She said I didn't know what it was to parent a disabled child, and how I shouldn't judge. She asked me to drop the topic or leave, and so I dropped it and went to play with Aria. Did I cross a line? I know how tough my brother and Kate have it, but their plan seems unethical AF. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole tell them they should watch my sister's keeper. This. This is exactly what I was about to say. It's completely immoral. Not the butthole. This is beyond immoral. They want to bring a child into this world to be a servant. That is effed. Effed and stupid because there's no guarantee and a good chance that kid goes no contact after 18 after figuring everything out. If this even happens, original poster needs to save the kid before that. Original poster likely can't do anything before 18 besides let the kid know he's on their side. While parentification is abuse, it likely won't be seen as removed from parents unless the parents take off and leave the young kids alone. What if the new baby has a medical, mental or physical disability also? Wouldn't this just compound the current issues and their planned future? What a joke. Well then they'd need to have two more after that to care for the for the first two. There's also a chance their second child have T21 as well. So what? They're going to keep having babies until they have one that doesn't have T21? Their reasoning is effed up. Not the butthole. You would be surprised how often these people do crap like that. I used to work for a group home. Plenty of siblings, and their poor younger sibling was tasked with their care. I watched a documentary once about two families who had kids with harlequin ichthyosis, a very severe, very painful genetic disorder with a low survival rate. Despite there being a 50% chance of future children also having the disorder, both families decided to have a second child, and their reasoning was more or less, we want a chance to have a normal kid. Both of the second kids ended up having the disorder. Morons. What about the non-zero chance that kid number two is disabled as well? Do they go for a third? There is no guarantee they won't get another disabled child too. Then they need to make two more and hope they both become doctors or something to be able to afford to care for their individual sibling charge and themselves slash their own families if they choose to have them. Not the butthole this couple is well-matched monsters though. Also even if they make another kid and the kid ends up wealthy enough to take care of their sibling that doesn't mean they'll be willing to. If they aren't willing, which in this situation is likely to end up being the case, there is absolutely no way to force them. Yeah you can treat them like a servant until they're 18, which is horrible but from a purely legal standpoint you could, but once they're 18 you can't force them to do a damn thing. They can walk out slam the door never talk to you again and there's nothing you can do. Not only is it an immoral plan, it's a stupid one too. Not to mention original poster said their brother and sister-in-law didn't want to have to save a few hundred thousand for their care later in life, but currently the cost to have a kid for 18 years, which let's be honest, many stay at home far past 18, is over 200k anyway, so why wouldn't you just save more than that over the next 30 years, and have your daughter be taken care of, without bringing another person into this world to live as a servant. Evil, it's effing evil. Imagine learning that your parents had you just to be a maid for life. How can they possibly think it's a good idea? My dad once said in front of me that he had children to help out with chores. I was probably around the age of eight and it still sticks out clearly in my mind. I am sorry. 
That's not a nice thing to hear. Every time I remind my mom that I don't want children she gets mad at me and tells me who is going to take care of you when you are older. And I always tell her you don't have children to be your slave and caretaker. That's just wrong. Agreed. Also, what happens if the next child they give birth to has the same, or worse, difficulties? Read, the book is so much better. Not the butthole. I don't know brah, it'll be difficult for them to understand reading a book actually, the movie might be a tad bit easier for them. Good point. Honestly the end was such a cop-out, I was quite disappointed. The book and movie have different endings, or, so I've been told. Way more than different endings. It was so different that they should have just made it as a similar story movie with a different title all by itself. The scrapbook or whatever that they made such a big deal of in the movie is like not even a thing in the book. The movie left out my favorite character completely, she doesn't even exist. Etc. It's barely the same story at all. I was so mad at how they changed the ending, and completely removed Julia. Her side story was absolutely awesome in the book. The movie just became a complete predictable thing, like, why would you change the biggest plot twist of the whole story? I am going to save you some agony don't ever watch and read I am legend. Watch it or read it don't do both. The filmmakers literally took out the whole meaning of the title. Outrageous. And don't even get me started on The Postman. I'll be honest, I preferred the movie ending. Sis deserved a life after being nothing more than sentient body parts for someone else. Hijacking the top comment in the hopes that original poster will see what is actually a very simple solution to his brother's problem life insurance. It is available for pennies on the dollar and it exists for situations just like this. He has a need to provide for someone who's still going to need help after he's gone. He and his wife could each get a 30-year term policy, which should be fairly cheap, even for a $1 million policy, assuming they're both young and relatively healthy, and they can convert it to permanent insurance at the end of the term in whatever proportion they want if they still have a need. That makes a lot more sense than trying to save what they need through a lifetime of nickel and diming, and certainly a lot more sense than breeding a caregiver. Not even just that how many stories do we see here on am I the butthole of people complaining that their parents forced them slash expected them to continue caring for a sibling? It never ends well, and usually in NC. Definitely not the butthole. My co-worker's husband has two sisters, one is severely special needs. She is in a state-run facility and my co-worker and DH are the guardians. They get updates on how she is doing constantly, and she is happy there as long as they have her iced tea. Agreed. Reading this made me sick. I wish I had some advice on how to stop this from happening but what can anyone do, really? No way to stop them from having the kid, but there might be a way to protect and support them once they're here. That unfortunately includes staying in the brother's life for now. Absolutely. I really do hope original poster read this and stays on top of it. Parentification is abuse, and it appears way too likely to happen here, and I have zero doubts that sibling will grow up with resentment towards the older sister, who did nothing wrong. That younger sibling's going to cut contact the minute they can and never look back, which is heartbreaking for the older daughter. Original poster being involved is a clear line of I support you and your right to choose might be the best option for any future sibling. Especially because by a certain age if parents keep trying to dump all the responsibilities on future sibling, they and original poster can get a social worker involved to come up with a much better, comprehensive, and supportive life plan for the older daughter who deserves to be cared for by good, well-prepared people who can properly help. Plus heart conditions are no joke. It's expensive as hell. I'm assuming USA here, and even if the parent's solution to everything is expecting a sibling to be responsible, what are they going to do for the next 18 years worth of medical and other expenses? Just ignore the other sibling's needs or just not provide any support for the current daughter? The list of problems with brother and sister-in-law are disgustingly long and I really hope that someone shakes some sense into them to open their eyes, and they step up. What's going to happen if their next child also happens to have a medical or other lifelong condition? just have another baby again? Also, did they even think about the possibility they might have another special needs child? A lot of people have children to provide future care. Not to care for disabled siblings necessarily but to care for themselves in old age. I don't have children and don't intend to, 
and I've been asked dozens of times by relatives why not, many of whom get really self-righteous and infer I'm criticizing their life choices. I never am, it's none of my business how they structure their families, but they get heated anyway and usually start arguing with me. One of the most common recurring arguments I've heard from them is I'm being selfish for not bringing somebody else into the world to share my life with. When I tell them I'm already sharing it with my wife and I don't think I'm capable of raising a child, the next thought process, almost invariably, is asking me who's going to care for me in my old age. Getting old is expensive, what am I going to do, pay someone to watch over me? If I have a child it's free. The selfishness of that second line of reasoning doesn't ever seem to dawn on them. This is an argument I've had with literally dozens of people in older generations. Original poster is definitely not the butthole, and hearing about your family through your edits gives me hope there are legit people out there, but in my experience this thought process is extraordinarily common. A lot of people have children with the intent they will birth their future caregivers. Once the child is born and matures, whether this actually happens however is up to the now adult child, and may not happen. Children don't owe their parents for being born, they had no say in it. This should be the top comment. Thank you for putting the words to the disgust I feel. You've raised a good point about the second child, original poster needs to ask the would-be parents about that possibility. Original poster is not the butthole. But his brother and sister-in-law are so sorely mistaken about reality. By the way what if when trying for one they get two more special needs children? I tried for my third I got a fourth too. Can happen in any pregnancy. Not the butthole. Sounds like indentured servitude without the agreement part. Also, any kid brought up with that expectation will resent everyone by some point and probably have a slew of personal issues mental health, trust etc. Plus they already have one kid with lifelong learning disabilities and physical disabilities what happens if kid no two has the same. Your brother and sister-in-law are the kind of people that shouldn't have a dog let alone kids. Agree, not the butthole. There are quite a few am I the butthole posts from adult kids whose parents just expect them to care for their special needs sibling and guilt them about wanting to go to college or move away and have their own lives. It's really sad. I was just about to mention the same thing. I've read numerous posts across Reddit about those children resenting their parents and their special needs sibling, to the point of cutting them off entirely to live their own life. Original posters brother and sister-in-law are not guaranteed their child will obey their intentions for a lifetime guardian, and it's a horrible thing to want for their child anyway. What file people? And in 16 to 18 years we will be reading here how apparently I was born just because I'm supposed to take care of my sis. And I love her, and she's sweet, like a little kid though, and she'll always be a little kid, and has physical disabilities too, and I want to go to college and go to Europe, and, I don't want to already be like a parent for the rest of my life before I've even had a life. Not the butthole. And every comment will be telling them to go no contact. Then a follow-up post from the parents wailing about how they did everything for their child and how could they. Not the butthole. To have another child to care for a previous child is unethical. Similarly, the life expectancy of a person with Down syndrome is in their 50s. This is wrong on so many levels. They are welcome to have another child though, finance, externalities, risk of another child with health conditions permitting. But to have a child for servitude is awful. Not including the heart defect that will potentially contribute to additional comorbidities. So 40 to 50 years, and they'd be in their early 70s, early 80s. Which, if you've been caring for someone, still leaves you strong enough to continue caring for them. I've worked with, and known personally, people that help care for their partners up until nearly 90 years old. So they are in this for the long run, and the idea of bringing another child into this world to unload some of that burden onto is deplorable. Not the butthole. There is no guarantee that the child will care for their sister. Or guarantee that their next child won't have special needs. Not the butthole. Your brother and missus however are not only ah, but quite vile too. Who is a kid as a substitute for an insurance policy? I totally agree, what they're planning is totally unethical. Anyway, what on earth makes them think that any subsequent child would want to be someone's carer? It's as though they think children don't a, have thoughts and feelings of their own and b, 
grow up. Also, it shows how dense they are if they think having a child is a cheaper option. I seriously hope they don't go through with this, I can't imagine what it would be like knowing that your parents only had you as a free carer and expect you not to have a life of your own but devoted to their firstborn. Not the butthole, what if that baby has similar or worse issues? What if that baby grows resentful? What if? It's disgusting to bring a child into the world for the sole purpose of caring for their elder disabled sibling. I can relate to this, I have a 9-year-old who is non-verbal on the autism spectrum. He will never live independently. When he was about 3 my husband started talking about us having another child, we had always planned on 2 to 3, but after the diagnosis I said no. My husband's reasoning was that our son will need someone to care for him after we are gone. It took a while but I explained exactly how wrong of a reason that is to bring another person into the world. We haven't had any other children, and we won't. My life is dedicated to my child and plans for him after I'm gone are being made. You are not the butthole. Not to mention, what happens if they have a second kid and that kid also has disabilities and cannot take care of their sibling? Not the butthole, Tilda, I know two families with children who will require lifelong care. They both had the same plan, healthy child will take care of their sibling when they get older. Both families had their sons move out at 18 and make it quite clear they aren't caring for anyone. Not the butthole, there are plenty of stories on here, of children like that, whose sole purpose is to care for a disabled sibling, it seems to go the wrong way often. Maybe you like to google some of them and show your brother. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, Please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.